All right. I don't know how to do this anymore. I've completely forgotten how to do all this stuff. Uh, but that's okay. Looks like maybe it's working. I'm actually, so it's been so long since I've done this. Uh, I'm actually going to jump in for a second. And we're going to echo ourselves and just make sure that everything is actually going and running and showing up. Uh, here. Here. One too many mice on the screen. Live, that's a good sign. That's not awful. Uh, the audio in the background's a little loud. Oh, it's doubling on the desktop. Uh, I don't understand why. Whatever. Uh, for some reason, so Windows updated and everything I had broke. <laughs> Not everything, but a lot of stuff I had broke. Um, it just kind of all crapped out. So uh, I think I've got the cameras working. It looks like everything's working. I'm looking at the preview screen on OBS and it seems fine. Um, the audio wasn't working for a second and now it seems to be working again. So it's doing a different thing. I don't know. Uh, it didn't sound like my voice was doing that weird echo thing, which I can't really remember why it did that. Also, I have to sneeze now getting off to a great start. Um, yeah, so it took a little hiatus for a bit. Not really intentionally, just kind of did. Um, I'm about to sneeze and try not to do it in the mic. Maybe, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so it just took a little time off and now I don't know what to do with any of this stuff. Um, so to kind of get back into it, and also I kind of didn't do as, like I do most of my coding these days on stream. And so it was kind of weird to not have coded in a while. I did a little bit, but not much. Um, so trying to kind of get back into it a little bit and see what's happening with that. Also, we're going to move the mic just a little bit. Sorry about that. Uh, just trying to watch the meters. Like I said, it's been a while since I've done this. And so what I what I went through and started doing again was the advent of code, um, which was from Advent, which is like months ago, like December. Um, so I went, I did like four days of it and then stopped. So to, earlier today, I did the fifth, started the fifth day. And I figured I would do that on stream a little bit. But then when I was Googling for something, um, I got this little, and I've seen it once before and I screen grabbed it and it was like messing around with it and it closed. But when I was doing the Google search results, it kind of like, the search results kind of fall back a little bit and you get this, uh, this is what the Google search page looks like for a second. It's like, you know, curious developers are known to seek interesting problems, solve one from Google. So it's basically just a little like Google code test or whatever they've got. This was from the first time when I did it. It was funny for me because I was Googling Python try accept, which is like one of the most basic things. Um, but somehow that triggered their algorithm and they threw the thing at me. Um, so I, I was messing around with it and I actually closed it accidentally without clicking on it. So I couldn't get back into it. Um, but it showed up again today and hopefully I didn't close it again. Um, I clicked the sign in button. So now it knows that it's me and theoretically it'll like stay open or whatever. Um, but I figured what I would do actually is go through these little code challenges and like, this is going to be something I've got no many, I, I, I looked like at the very briefest of things about this, because I was trying to get back into it. And they're like, yeah, you have to, you know, whatever. Um, but they're just, they're code challenges from Google. Uh, and I'm sure it's a recruiting thing, whatever. I'm not at all likely to get too far in these uh, because I expect that unless you've got like a computer science degree with some of these things, it's going to be like tough, uh, but whatever. We'll just see how far we get and do some stuff. Um, the delete all of your data associated with foobar oh wow uh so it, it gives you this little intro thing or command line thing or whatever well, by the way i have no idea if like this is like they just opened this and threw this at me so like as far as i'm concerned like i can stream this um hopefully that's not i'm not going to get lawyered to death by google um the I wouldn't expect that to be the case. Uh, and also I didn't see anything on here that's like, don't do this or whatever. So like, 
Uh, yeah, so timeline and challenges. Success, I've infiltrated Commander Lambda's evil organization, and finally earned yourself an entry-level position as a minion, blah, 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 blah. Um, so the challenge is, I've got seven days to do it, so hopefully this one won't take me very long, but it also says you have seven days to do each newly requested challenge or lose access to the site. So like, it, the way I'm reading this and the way that it looks like is you can basically say, you know, do you wish to proceed and start the timer on your first challenge? So like you do the first one, seven days, cool. You'll get at least a second one and you have seven days to do that, but you don't have to do them like in a row is the way I'm interpreting this. We'll see. Um, let's see, you're being worked to the bone. Request challenge. Okay, new challenge. So re-ID. And so I read through this a little bit. Um, I've got 168 hours to solve this one. Hopefully it won't take me that long. Because uh, if it does take me that long, I'm probably not going to do very many of these. Uh, or I would probably only do one of them. Um, but so it actually, it gives you this like little command line interface or whatever. And whatever, I just typed some Linux commands and it worked. Uh, so re-ID is the, is the project that we're working for here. And uh, what you do is you just, you put your solutions, it, and it's funny that they, they give you a Java file and a Python file, and you can pick one or the other, but like those are the two languages that they want. And I'm kind of surprised there's not like a Go solution, um, because that's their language, uh, but whatever. Um, oh, so I read the, yeah, so this is the readme, uh, and basically the, the long and short of it is what you're trying to do is make a list of all the prime numbers or a bunch of the prime numbers. Um, and then you draw a number from the hat, which is what their input is to your solution function. And the number starts with an index in the string of that primes um, and the new menu. So like if it's index zero and they, they give you this down here, um, so if you call and whatever, look at the Python one solution dot solution. If you pass a zero, it starts at index zero. So two, three, five, seven, and then 11 is the next one. Maybe I don't know. Uh, two, three, five, seven, 11. Yeah. So index zero starts at index zero of this long string of numbers. And then uh, index three, which would be zero, one, two, three starts at index three, and then you do the next five numbers after that. Um, you just do the, the next five numbers after the after the one that you have. Um, so you need to write a function to do that, uh, which is cool, right? So we'll just try it. And so what I was trying to do is um, see if there's like Python, if this was like a full virtual machine that I was running against and I had Python on it and I could run pip and all that other stuff. But Python version command not found help for list of commands. So the only thing that you, the only commands you have are these. Uh, so you write your code somewhere, like I'm going to write my code somewhere else and throw it in and copy it into the file and do the verification, which runs the tests and then submit for the final solution um, or for the final thing. Uh, so keyboard help, save to open the file when editor's in focus, close the editor when editor's in focus. Save the open file. Toggle between escape and tab. Wait, is there an editor? CD cat delete me. Oh, edit. Open file and editor. Feedback, print, list. Okay, I missed the edit thing. Request new challenge, print progress. Status. You've not yet solved a challenge. Dun, dun, dun. All right. Uh, yeah, because I just started. Um, so... I am going to do this in PyCharm. Uh, oh, here is, this is what I was working on for the uh, advent of code, which we're not going to do. Uh, yeah, so I just opened solutions.py uh, as a new file for this project and project one. So I made a new Git repo for this. Um, and here's solutions.py. So uh, the first thing I wanted to, so the way that I was just looking at this is, the first thing I need to do is just get this list of prime numbers. Um, and they say that the, so these prime numbers, so Commander Lambda has a lot of minions. So the value of n will always be between zero and 10,000. Cool. Um, now the, the interesting thing about that, right, is if the value of n is 10,000, you need to have 10,000 plus five 
numbers to deal with uh to, to look at my guess is when we run the primes it'll it'll jump that out anyways and find it um but you need to make sure that like if if one of the tests is like sends sends the number 10,000 to the solution you don't want to have only 10,000 numbers as your index because you need to go past that in order to get the ones that are past that uh so this and this is where like I don't know how like so this is where I don't know like what's the magic way to do primes and I started looking one up um python generate prime numbers right and so oh, this is a different one I got to a different page also it's funny I was like part of me was like maybe I should look at Firefox so Google doesn't see me searching all this stuff because like I'm now tagged with this they'll see my search history as I go through this like and figure out how I figured out the answers basically um and I was like ooh, I could use a different browser but of course they've got my IP address so like I could use a VPN and jump over there and then like do all this other stuff and like they've got browser fingerprinting so I could use another like I'd have to use another computer on a VPN that they didn't have a deal with I don't know um but I'm not worried about it uh like like I said like I'm not I'm not particularly worried about getting contacted by an actual Google recruiter to do stuff. Uh, so like, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, there's some problems. Why don't you print out divide by X? Doesn't mean it's prime. It only means that particular X didn't divide it. Continue moves to the next iteration. Okay. This is something I've heard about before. Yeah. The seat sieve of this one yeah in mathematics the civil ethos is an ancient algorithm for finding all the prime numbers up to a given limit does so by iteratively making a composite not prime the multiples of each prime, starting with the first prime or two. The multiples of a given prime are generated as a sequence of numbers starting from that prime with a constant difference between them that is equal to that prime. This is the Civ's key dissension from the trial division to subsequently test each candidate number for divisibility by each prime. Once, okay, I I'll almost followed that. Um, Once all the multiples of each discovered prime have been marked as composites, the remaining unmarked numbers are primes. Prime numbers are natural number. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Create a list. Okay, so to find all the prime numbers, to find all the prime numbers less than or equal to a given integer by the Atheris's method, uh, we, you, or F, that method. Create a list of consecutive integers from two through n. Two, three, four, four. Initially, let p equal two, the smallest prime number. Enumerate the multiples of p by counting in increments of p from two p to n, and mark them in the list. These will be two p, three p, four p. P itself should not be marked. Find the smallest number in the list greater than P that is not marked. If there's no such number, stop. Otherwise, let P not equal this new number, which is the next prime. I repeat from step three. When the algorithm terminates, the numbers remaining not marked in the list are all the primes below N. See, like part of me actually wants to try and like generate the like to to generate the list of primes right to do it like to, to make my own run of this um first generate the list of integers from two to thirty because the other because the other thing about this is so you're making this long string oh this is interesting so you could actually do this the string needs to have 10,005 digits in it, or 10,004. 
because it's the index plus five. 10,004, 10,005. We'll, we'll figure that out. Um, but so you don't know, we don't know in advance what the largest prime number is going to be. That get, We don't know which prime number is going to finish creating a list that's 10,005 characters long. Um, but we we kind of don't need to know that, though. Because if, like, we can just keep at, like, this algorithm doesn't know how long it is. Like, it's just going to keep going until you stop. So, oh, wait, or is it? Hang on. Or do you have to know? Hang on a second. Maybe you do have to know the equal. Create a list of consecutive integers from n. Initially, let p equal the smallest prime number. Two, enumerate the multiple primes by counting the increments of P from 2P to N and mark them in the list. Find the smallest number in the list greater than P that is not marked. If there's no such number, stop. Oh, okay, so you do have to know well, so you could, the question is, could you, the smallest number in the list. Oh, well, you could actually do it that way, right? So you could look at the smallest, so you could run through this process. And then as you're running through the process, hit the stopping point. So basically, every time you run through the process, let's see if I can describe this right. Every time you run through this process, you create in, and so what you could do is like do n, or sorry, two, which is the first prime number, and then n is three. Let me see if this works. Initially, let p equal two. Okay, so p equals two. Enumerate the multiples of p, counting in increments from of p from two p to n, and mark them on the list. Find the smallest number in the list greater than P that is not marked. If there's no such number, stop. Otherwise, let P now equal this new number, which is the next prime. Repeat from step three. So, you could run the process with some arbitrary number. If that, and then if it stop, if you hit the stopping point, you check to see what the current length of the string is, if the length of the string is less than 10,005, add another number and just let the process continue. Like it, it's not stateful in terms of it doesn't know, like if, if, you're, if you're looking at 17 or something and you're looking at, yeah, so if you if you stop at number 16 because there is no other number that's prime after it because you stopped at 16, it doesn't know if you add 17 into the mix that that is, that those two things, they're not aware of each other. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm saying that well. Um, but so that's, that's a way to try that, right? Um, let's try that. So... Hey, it's Bam. Hey, it's politics. Even better spam. Um, so, I'm just trying to figure out how to like jump into this, but let's just do four um, check num in range of two to 20. Like, I just want to get something going on here. Um, Right, so print check num. We're just gonna see check num. Why is my tab not working? Am I hitting the wrong key? I feel like I'm hitting the wrong key. Oh, maybe it's enter? I can't remember. Uh so whatever, there's two through whatever. So the the thing is gonna be, and then what we're gonna have is primes. And I'm just gonna do this as a list to start with. 
So we know that two is the is the thing, but we might need to see it. So um and let me go back here in this example. So yeah, so the first number of the list is two. Cross out every second number in the list after two by counting up from two in increments of two. These will be all the multiples of two in the list, right? So. Can you do Python for range? There's a word that I'm looking for that I can't think of right now. That's like the increment. Um, the counter, the step, step is probably it. Step. Integer value determines which increment is in between. Right. Okay. So how? What would that look like? Uh, two. So that's gonna be two, four, six, eight, three, eighteen, right? So none of those numbers are prime. So how? What would be a way to do that? So we could actually do. this so primes oh you could actually do mm, ba, ba, ba. can you add okay here's one way to do this i think so primes from two This is going to be a weird way to do this. Um, let me look at Python list for a second. Because what I'm thinking is you could actually just make an array, appendix in, insert, remove, pop, clear, index, count, sort of reverse copy. Like, can you make... Like, I don't think you can make a list because like, yeah, let's do this as a list and then just have the list where the index equals the number. So for, uh, so what's, I actually don't know a good way to, just populate a for whatever initial number in range of zero through 21. That way we'll get 20. Uh, primes append. And then so what we want to do, I'm going to start everything as true. So the, my thinking here is I'm going to create an array where the index is equal to the number, um, which is fine. So zero, and I, it be, I'm starting at zero. I'm not going to worry about numbers zero and one, but I don't want to have to offset stuff and then recalculate it later. It's fine. Um, but I'm going to set everything as true. And the way that I'm going to mark the list is we're going to go through and by the index, we're going to mark things as false if they hit. So we'll start with everything true. Then we'll mark the mark of the list that we'll make is, is calling things false. Um, so there's all our trues. And then we're going to start with this one for check num in range of two to 21. So, 
and I'm gonna add, we'll be adding variables in here in a minute to let this stuff go, but this is just gonna be like the, the test run of it to see how this is working. Um, check num in range two to 21. And then do I actually wanna, yeah, cause we need to start at two. So then what we do is primes, And we're starting at two, so that's cool. Two times check, no. no. Hang on. So we need to do the first number of the list is two. Cross out every second number in the list. Oh, so two to twenty-one by twos. That's what we need to do. Uh, and then we do print, uh, no, um, primes. Check num. I've changed all my keys and I don't know how to use this keyboard. False. So... range okay so now i actually need to know what the numbers are so that's zero that's one that's two but we actually don't want two itself so really what we want to do is start with the next one right no we start at two. Oh, this is interesting the first number of the list is two cross out every second number in the list after two by counting up from two and in increments of two So really what this is, is two, I just want to see the, because we want to start at the next one, which would be two times two, right? Which is going to be four to 21. So this, we need this one to be true, right? Because that's zero, one, two, two is a prime, three, we're not worried about four is false, five is like so. We're gonna print this out in a better way in a second. Run that, there we go, so that's true. Okay, so now, oh, how do we do list index? Um, pi list index array loop with or without index enumerate okay for um the number which is really the index oh wait that's going to be the number of the value isn't it Um, is prime enumerate uh, primes. Print F string. Oops. This keyboard is not in my head yet. The number. This is, uh, it's embarrassing how bad I am at this keyboard. The number. Uh, prime is whatever. Not the greatest words, but it'll let us know what's going on. I think. For that, that, boop, boop, boop. Oh, in. 
Yup. Try that. Okay. So we don't... Uh... So I actually want to fix those first two. Um... False. False. Like, we're just going to hard code the first couple of them. And two is true. Like, I could do that some other way, I'm sure, but like that, that'll get us there. Um, so two is prime, three is prime, four is not, five is true, six is false. So every other one is going to be false here. Okay, that's, that's good. Like... 15, for example, is not prime, but we ha that hasn't hit in our list yet. Um, okay, and so now what we need to do... First number in the list is two. Cross out every second number, but counting two is up to two. Gotcha. Okay, cool. The next number in the list after two is three. Cross out every third number in the list after three, but counting up three is in order. These will be multiples of the list. Next number across, not yet crossed out, is five. The number is not crossed out. At this point on the list are all prime numbers below, th or all the prime numbers below the 30. Numbers not crossed out at this point in the list. Okay, so the next number in the list after two is three, the next number not yet crossed out. So And this is where like it needs to be like functional and recursive and like all that jazz that I'm not 100% on, but we're going to find out. So check num in range. So all right, so the way that we could do this is Yeah, how would you make okay so the 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 way to do this is we start by looping through the index or looping through so primes and then we're going to load the primes all right so we got those and then I'm not sure what the best way to do this is. While um, check num less than 21. So this is where we're going to do the loop. So now how would we go through the loop? So what I want to do is like loop through the array. And then if you hit one, run the process. But then you need to look at the array again and find the next following number. This is interesting. Um, I can almost see it. Um, for the initial number in the range, so that throws all our numbers in there. So then while, well, let's just do one. How would you, um, but I want to jump to the second one already. Um, for the...
Well, so you need to run through the loop. Um... Well, you could actually, okay, so hang on a second. Well, so four item in primes. Uh, let's do this for for the number. It's like, we're going to loop through this again. Uh, let's just copy this down here. For the number is prime and enumerate and enumerate primes. So that's going to all be true because we haven't done anything with it yet. So if is prime is true, Here's where we're going to do our stuff. You do is true. What's the Python there? Uh, we'll just print it out. So this should skip zeros and zero and one, right? Oops. So if it's true, the uh <laughs> welcome welcome back yeah so i don't know i just took a hiatus for i didn't really mean to it just kind of happened and then minecraft happened and a lot of minecraft happened my brain kind of latched onto that for a little bit so thank you it's fun to be back uh so i got a uh i got a, a google code challenge uh i don't know if you'd seen this before, but like I was searching for some stuff and like the search results dropped back and this little thing came up. Um, that's a Google rec recruiting thing or whatever. Um, but so I'm doing the little go code challenges now to see what happens. Um, don't get me wrong. I have no expectations of Google recruiters actually calling me. This is just one of those like I want to see what the challenges are like and play with the play with the thing and play through it. Um, the I expect very quickly that these things will get into like you have to have a CS degree in order to understand what's even happening. Um, but I want to see how far I can go. Uh, so yeah, and like right now I'm trying to do prime numbers in a different way. Um, so whatever, uh, or not in a different way. I'm trying to. There's a old ancient algorithm called the sieve of whatever this person's name is that I can't pronounce that you can probably pronounce because you can do that stuff. Um, and so I'm, I'm doing my own version of this basically. Um, uh, also, I'm not particularly interested in leaving my gig right now. Um, but I mean, right. Uh, that would be uh, whatever. It's fun to think about. Um, so I've got this, uh, yeah, right. They got some and like, they're going to have more because that's where gravity happens. Um, but yeah, so I'm trying to loop through, I'm trying to create a list of prime numbers and like this, this is cool. Cause like, there's this really old algorithm that like legitimately it's like the early second century, apparently, um, for figuring this stuff out, uh, for how to get prime numbers. And it's kind of, it's a neat little, a neat little process that you go through of just like strike out. So you start with two and you strike out every other number because by definition, it's multiple of two and you go to three and you strike those out and all end up with just the numbers that are left because you're chopping them down from the lower end to the, the higher end. Um, and then like you, you bang through a whole bunch already, uh, that have already been knocked out every time you go through it. So, um, I, like, I know I've got it in my head how to do it, but I'm trying to figure out how to like program it and do it like in a functional way, um, to see how that goes. And so I've got a list of the numbers and I'm starting with everything true. This is basically the, the way they're talking about doing it. And then I need to knock the numbers down and I know how to do it 
a little bit, but I got to like do it. Uh, so if it's true, so if it's prime, we're going to print that out. But really what we're going to do is if the, so if it's the first one, which can you get, um, Python get list item that matches first time. Get the first item in a list that matches a condition. I love Stack Overflow. If you want a stop iteration to be raised, if no match is found, if you want a default value, none to be returned instead for X. X and X in the iterable if X greater than three default value. This is not exactly what I'm looking for. I would like to get the first item from a list matching a condition. It's important that the resulting method not process the entire list, which could be quite large. Um, is iterable, first in range, function be something like that. If you want stop iteration to be raised, if no matching is found, next x for x in the iterable if x is greater than 3. If you want the default value, e.g. none to be returned instead, note that you need an extra pair of parentheses around the generator expression in this case. Then you need whatever generator expression isn't the only argument. See, I don't totally understand this. Um, see, most answers are solved. This is from 2010. I love it. Uh, so Python T6 or newer. Yeah, so this still seems to be... Find the first element in the list that matches some condition. That's going to be the same thing that somebody scraped from Stack Overflow, right? Oh, no. See, this is... For animal and animals, if length of animals greater than five, first... Next, filter, lambda, animal, length, minus five. Find the first element using filter and next. Another way is more compact, so some people find it nicer. Use a filter function. Adding a second parameter to the next call, Python returns value. None in our case. Um, so the operations in Python 2 filter would have returned already. I'm not using listed filters. So this is list filter. This is Python 2 stuff. And we're in Python 3 something now. Fastest way to find an item in a list. That's not really what we want. Find the index of an element in a list. What if you could do the first index? Find the index of the element in list. First, last, or all occurrences. Ah, oh, look at this. List index. Okay, here we go. List index. Python list data type provides this method to find the first index of a given element in a list or sub. X item to be searched in the list. Start. Item to be searched in the list. Element, okay. List of elements, elm, elm, okay. So, really what we should be able to do, uh, get rid of all this. So, print primes 
list his list right true nope index what am i doing i forgot what it was already index i'm doing i'm in a list Let's try that two okay so that okay oh that's okay that's actually really cool so Oh, this is interesting. So. Okay. Am I ready to jump into that that way? Um, so really what we want to do is for. Um, check nums in range of so I think we want to do it we don't want to mark two by itself we want to mark and it goes up in thing right so we want to do two squared it's been a long time since I've done math like this I lost the page. Possibly it has opened somewhere else. Let's bring it all the way over here. Um, cross out every third number in the list, counting up by threes. Yeah, so... from 2p to n so it's not so you want to so we want to do so we're going to do range of Two times the number. To 21. By the number. And then what we want to see is print check noms so what I should see is four six eight etc cool because we we got two and we want to do two as the number and then we want to go from 2x that to get to our first one and then we go in increments of two so let's look at this There's probably a way to do this with TDD. Um, it's probably what I should be doing, but I don't know how to do that yet. Um, so this is gonna be three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18. Yeah, okay, so that's that's doing, so we started at three this time because I, I I I blanked out zero, one, and two. So this actually starts at three. Oh, wait. Initial range of two to twenty-one. Oh, it appends true. Ah, I gotcha. Um I should just do twenty one. Whatever. That's fine. I get it. Um For check nums in range, two Prime's index, that's cool. 21's cool. Like, we'll make those variables or hard code, or like, actually, that will become its own moving variable. Um, just format that a little bit better. For check nums in range, two Prime's index true. Okay, so for all those numbers then what we want to do is
we want to change those values to false. That's really check num. It's singular. So primes check num equals false. So we know that if it matches one of these statements, it's going to be not so much a prime. And if we come down here and print our primes, our primp our primes, Uh, oh wait, we want to keep this one. This one's better. This is how we can actually see what's happening. Um, so now I actually kind of do want to have a test on this uh, because I can do, I want to check some prime numbers. I'm not going to check them all, but it would be nice to know what's up. So project one, new file, tests, solution, pi. Yes. Um, import unit tests, class. Oh, and also we want to do import solution. Ba, 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 ba. Sol equal. Whoops, I don't know what I'm doing right now. Def setup. Oh, I don't know what that is. I was. I don't know how to make that go away or what I just did there. I don't know how to turn that off. Sure line numbers, rinse, breadcrumbs, gutter icons. It's just going to live there forever. Whatever. Uh, Desk setup. So, sol equal, or global sol. Oh, wait, is that how? I actually don't know how you. I'm used to doing this object oriented ways. That's. You don't think you really need that. Uh, we just want to do this. Actually, I don't know how we do this. I've never really done testing this way. Def test. Check it. Self. Pass. If name equals main I gotta I changed the way my arrow keys work and it's really messing with me right now um you know test main that shouldn't do anything right test pass one blah blah, blah sure cool so but if we do this does that work yeah okay cool No, that looks something's wrong. That ran. So that's running solution. I actually don't know how. Oh, I know what's going on. This isn't in a method. I'm so used to doing it like as classes that I forget how to do it as not classes. Um, And also, I actually don't know how this works. If I put this up here, paste that there, test solution, boop, boop, boop. Now if I print solution, nothing should happen, basically. Yeah, okay. 
Does that work? I don't know. False, false, false. Okay, so that does work. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it's just, it's a module, you're loading it, you're calling the variables. I got it. I kind of knew that, I've just never actually tried it that way. Um, so then what we can do is... Solution to solution. I'm not gonna worry about so what what they're gonna do is pass in a number to this. And then from there, well that's I might as well do it. Um or start, might as well start it. Um No, I'm not gonna start that yet. Hmm, how do I wanna do this? See, this is where, like the thing that I want to, I don't really want to test the thing this way. So, def make populate prime array. Pass. I did this a little bit backwards than I normally would do. Normally I would do this. Well, I mean, not this specifically, but normally I do it this way, which is to say def test the thing. Got to get those keys back in my brain. So we just run that. Nothing should happen. Good. Test pass not. And then if we run solution. I spell it right. Populate prime array, run that. So normally what I do is this and make sure it fails and then I'd actually create that method, but I did it backwards this time. See how that'd be. Okay, so then what we wanna do is test and see, we wanna know the primes, right? So. Um, self assert true, and this is actually good because I'm looking for true or false values. So assert true, and then it's going to be solution primes, and then we can just put the indexes that we want to have. So zero, one, two, two is a prime. So two. This should fail because I think I'm hard coding it the other way because we did it on that three a second ago. False is not true. It's funny for me that they don't capitalize true here because I think that is how it actually works. Um, but if we take this back and we actually populate the array this way. Um, oh, so we need to call populate prime array. So this is actually where we're going to do this. So we're gonna start with this. Um, I'm not gonna make all this work at the same time. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna test through this basically. Uh, run it. There we go. So primes two is now true because we've added every made everything true here. Um, just to prove it, this won't work or this will fail. Failed. False is not true. Somewhere down here, right there. Cool. Um, I like it. So now what we can do is figure out what the actual, and so like, I need to know what the prime numbers are, and then I can go make test cases basically that verify up to however far we want to do it that gives us the confidence that we're doing the right thing. Um, Populate prime array, cool. How do you, is, am I spelling that wrong? Or is that, oh no, it's doing that weird import thing, I think. 
solution. Uh, populate primary, cool. Primes twos coming in. So we got that. So this one's working. So like that's the first test passing. Hooray! Now what we want to do is three is also a prime. So that's cool. Again, I'm not. I'm going to add the minimum amount of code to make things work. This is still going to work. And theoretically, I could do test cases down across all of this. Like each test case, or like an individual test case for every number, but like. A little overkill. So now here's the one that's going to fail because assert false on four. By the way, the other thing I could do is have an array where I loop over this and do it like there's a bunch of different ways you could do this, but this is just easy right now um, or low friction. Let's start using that low friction. True is not false. So we've gone through and created we populated our primes array with these two initial falses and then everything else is true, but that's not what we want to have. So here's where we need to actually start going and doing the, the stuff, which is, and I'm going to do this one at a time. So I just want to get that one passing to start with. Um, and like one way to pass it would just be to hard code that, which at some points in, depending on the process, I might actually do to then work into it. So I've got, so I've got a green thing to fall back on. Yeah, you know what, why don't we do that? Um, so, cause I like being, there's a, a woman named Sandy Metz who uh, has this philosophy of stay one step away from green. And I really like the approach. So we're gonna pass this. Nope. And also it makes sure that we know what's happening. True is not false. Oh yeah, it should have been false. See, that's one of the reasons you do that is to make sure you really understand what's going on and that you you're targeting the right thing. So there you go. Test passed. So now what I need to do is do this programmatically instead of hard coded. Um, and this is where we can get back into this. So for check num in range two times prime index, which is the first one equals true, which would be two through 21 and then we we jump through and and really what I want to do here is do this so um, um, so what's a good what's a good name for that number naming things is hard uh, Match number. Yeah, let's call it the match number. Because it's not the lowest number, it's not the highest number. It's maybe it is gonna be a prime. It's probably a better name for that than that. Um, but this will work for right now. So the match number is going to be prime index is true. So the first one that's true. Oh, wait, is this going to work? Hang on. Oh, that won't work. That works the first time, but that's not going to work the second time because the second number is still going to be true. See, I want to get, I want to solve for this right now, which is how to get there programmatically. Finding... finding the next number that's true. Um, and like, I could make another list that has this. Um, I could just capture the index position and then add plus one to it. I could, but I'm kind of, I kind of want like a, this is a fun little exercise to see like, what are the, what are some options here, right? Um, Cause it's, hey, we can see what's going on. Um, so if we're going through, and we're, we're pulling the numbers. Oh, well, so what you could do, 
And again, I'm trying to, I'm, this is just puzzling stuff out to see how you do it. But what you could do is in the range, you could start, you could start the range every time at one higher. And this would be like a little recursive thing where you'd start one higher than you ended with last time. Hmm. Because some, because like every time, so like we need to, we need to go through the list multiple times and doing that. Is there index? So wait, index has a starting position, right? Index start. Okay, yeah. So what we could do return zero base index. Optional arguments stopped and end are interpreted as as in the slice notation are used to limit the search to a particular sub uh, subsequence of the list. The return index is computed relative to the beginning of the full sequence rather than the start argument. Okay, right. So you could say start at ten, but if it's the one, it doesn't say like one or whatever. Um, So how would you do, how would you pass that? This, and this is something that, so somehow we have to keep, capture this number or do a recursive call. Um, and I'm tempted to try a recursive thing here, but I feel like that would be dangerous because it's trying to append, it's trying to mess with the same array. So um, last, match number which these it goes up by primes right so last prime last verified prime and we'll start this with two All right, how, okay, let's just see if this works. So. So we load everything with trues, then we create a match number, which is true, first thing it hits true, and the last verified prime, which is gonna be two. Print match number, run it. Didn't print anything. It's because we're not calling it. Try it now. So that hits two. Okay, that's cool, that's what we want. And then we can go through. For check num in range two times prime index times the match number. So this is where we do this. Keep doing that. For check num in range of two times match number to 21 to match number. I'll bring this back to a single line. And we're going to put this other one in parens to make it slightly more obvious what's going on here. Uh, we will do this, though, because it's kind of long. So that's going to make them all false. So if we run this, okay, cool, nothing's happened. But if we run our test solution, still going to pass because we're hard-coded. Question is, if we take out the hard-coding, do we pass now? I believe the answer is going to be yes. The answer is yes. Okay, cool. So that is now 
getting one through four. So cool. I'm just gonna go up through several of the primes and cause we're like right now, I'm hard coding step by step by step. So, so yeah, so three after it is five, cross out every fifth number. Yeah, so five, seven, 11, 13. Okay, so four is false. Five is gonna be true. So this should actually just work because we haven't we haven't touched it yet. Six we adjusted because it's the a thing of two. A thing of two, a uh, multiple of two. So that should still be false. Seven's gonna be prime, which we haven't touched, so that should be fine. So I gotta get through one where two isn't gonna cover it. And then eight's gonna be false, which we've adjusted. Nine, it's our first one that's gonna be a thing. So nine should be false, and this is gonna fail. Because we aren't adjusting it yet. Okay, cool. All right, and so here is also where I am going to maybe hard code that. I don't like the way that I'm doing this inside this one, but I don't have a better... way to do it, because I, I want to get the test passing as green so that I can then do the work and get back to it. Um, okay, so how, and what's funny is like, I, I think this is one of those, like if we solve this one, it, like it, cause this, this first one set up everything, then we have to just figure out the length, but that's, that's an, once we get this methodology down, that will be the algorithm for the sieve of Mr. E. Uh, whose name I have yet to learn how to pronounce. So for check num and range, that to 21 to match number. See how, so I've got, so the last verified prime is two. Primes index to the last verified prime. So I need, I need the next one after that. So after we run this, there's better ways to do this. I know there's better ways to do this, but we're gonna do it this way to start with. To step one, get all the tests to pass, like get the get the thing working. Then we can go back and uh, refactor if it becomes necessary. Uh, so this does all of our stuff. And then really what we need to do is we kick up match number and I'm gonna, I'm gonna code this funny for a minute. Because if we just add one here, I don't know where plus is on this keyboard. Um, and get the next true. Right now, this one should give us three. Uh, nine false expected, unexpected in debt. Try that. Right, so we... We looped through everything with two, and then we we basically just incremented the match number by one. But what we did was we looked at the last verified prime. We incremented one, but then we, like the next number might not have been prime, but we looked, we transferred through and found the next true value, which gave us the actual prime. Um, so this, this gives us a new match number. Um, and 
And so we could actually... See, like there's like we're seeing this like this is the pattern, right? And so if we actually do I'm gonna back this out a little bit. And again, I've got this hard coded, but I'm gonna take out this for a minute and I'm gonna take that out of the test. I could leave that in because it's it's green and it's it's getting us there, but I wanna uh, I wanna run this for a second because what I think we should be able to do is if I set last verified prime to zero and we just do this plus one here again. And the reason I want to do that is where's plus. True last verified prime plus one. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this found, this found, Ooh, why did that give me two instead of three? This all pass, but those would all pass. Match number, last verified prime plus one. Oh, 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 we need to do match number plus one. That should just be called the same thing all the time. Right. Oops. So we're looking for match numbers. We're actually going to start at two. This will actually start us at two. This is kind of weird. Like, I, so starting and ending things that kind of get you sometimes. But let's see if this gives us three down here. No, exploded. What did I do? Match number. Match number. Match number. Local very match number reference before assignment. Oh, because it was here. Try that. Yeah, so that gets us three again. So that's actually popping through. Loops through and like we could, so we could do this same thing and like this. So like, let's, let's see if this actually works. So I'm going to get the basics of it right to start with. I don't know why it's calling it twice. Oh, because it's calling it, it's loading it once and then it's calling it twice. Um, so the first thing we need to do here is if aim. Main. Then we do this. So, because I just fired up the test and it was calling this. I get, I'm used to doing this in slightly different ways, um, but whatever. It's cool. There we go. And now there should only be one of those. Yep. Three. Cool. Um, test failed. So that's on our nine again. You can put a message here, right? It's nine. Okay, so that shouldn't be true. True is not false. I mean, it should be false. So if we actually just run through this same thing again, right here, I think that'll make it go past. It passed. So that's, this is the, the solution for it. Like right now I'm just calling it the once. So now we need to call this for every number that we're going through up to the number that we're going to hit. Uh, which I'm trying to think how to do that. Um, So the easiest first thing, right, is we just pull that out to a function.
and then we pass it. So you should either, so like, because you could pass the thing back. And I, so I'm already, I'm, I, you know, I want to think about this just a little bit in terms of like the next issue of this, which is going to be creating that string. Like, I just want to think through that a minute. Like, I'm not trying to like whatever premature optimization. Yeah, I know. Um, but I want to at least kind of think about the structure of this a little bit. So. Because what we could be doing is adding in the other parts of this as well, like the actual string part of it. Excuse me. Um, but the real trick is like punching through, like, so you're, <laughs> the general rule of thumb is you either want to um, manipulate something or return a value, like you shouldn't do both kind of thing. Because what I was thinking is we could update the array and then return the number the next iteration number but that's kind of doing two things like you're returning a value and you're manipulating a thing um so and like i guess you could just jump oh okay wait a minute i got it i got it i got it i got it um So def identify primes. And so I'm just going to keep this test here for the populate prime array, and this will be kind of an internal method. So I'm not going to test the internal method. I'm going to just, I'm going to test the, the top level one here because um, this one's going to call this one. But if this one doesn't work, this ain't going to be the right thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is just hoist all of this out. Because that's the same thing. Uh, and the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to copy it and comment it. And pasto presto. Wrong buttons all the time. And then, so what we want is match number, and I'm gonna I'm gonna leave 21 as hard coded for now. I just want to get this part of it working. I don't need to mess. I want to mess with the code as little as possible. And so I think this, if we do, and really what we want to really what this is is. This is really identifying non primes. Um, so real quick, oh, hang on. So let's just test, make sure everything's cool. And then what we're going to do, so we've got the method in there now. We're going to call the method here. Match number equals match number. And like, I'm doing this on the second one, but like it'll either work for the second one or it won't. Uh, and then we're going to comment this out. Uh, the other thing that I want to do just to make sure is do this because I like having named things. All right, so let's see if the test still pass. Test still pass. Sweet. And then I should be able to take not this same thing up here, comment this one out, and paste it here. And see what that does. Run out. Sweet. So that, that's working. And now we can kind of chomp this down.
And then we can do, so this is all about like removing duplication, right? And so duplication. So match number is zero. And this is where it becomes the thing of doing manipulation and doing a return value. And so the question is, How was I thinking about this just a second ago? Oh, so you could just do... No, that still wouldn't work. Oh, it's still, I mean, it would work, whatever. But I'm, I'm looking for the way that works the once. So what I was thinking you could do is loop through the, the primes array and just start at every one and then do an index getting the next true value. Or would that work? That might work. No, it wouldn't, because then what would happen is the next time, like you might jump four forward, but then the next time through, you would do, the iteration would come back to the, the next one if you're doing the, the enumeration. So, but what you could do, somehow you have to be able to send an index to it. Um, well, you could just make your own index, right? But like how, Python list, arbitrary index loop. Like what you could do is just do a while loop and then say while forever or while your number is less than the list of the array started at one, add one or whatever. And then you would do the loop over and say, grab grab the first value that is prime, that is true or whatever, and then just jump your index to that. I just wonder if there's a, a different way to do that. Um, like that would work. Uh, listen looping, index out of range, length append, they're mutable, that's cool. You can hit them the other way, retrieve a sub list. Looping for item. For loop is a block. You have a block or an indentation. Indentation must be consistent. We can try to modify the length of the list while reiterating. Intuitively, you might expect a copy to be empty, but it's not. Technical reasons aren't important, but the highlights the importance rule. Never modify the length of the list while iterating over it. Really modify the values of each while looking at it. Yep. I don't know, like Python gives a neat way of doing that. For index. Yeah, see, basically you could do this. For item in a copy. I don't know what's your copy. for item in a copy or whatever. Yeah, the enumerates, a lot going on here. Two, three, one, one, two, nested. See what, it, what I think I want, or what I, what I want is We can write enumerate by hand. List comprehension. This might be what we're looking for. We've already made a new list from existing one when we created a doubled. No, that's making a new list, which isn't what we want. We don't want a tuple. See, I think the way to do it might just be that, the the code it, but it feels like what would be neat is if you could actually have like a little function in there 
that may, that jumped the index for you. Um, that was the wrong thing to do. I'm looking for tabs. See, dark mode makes it harder to see and probably just the... Arbitrary index and numerate. Get the list from the list. Python list loop jump to index. Right, Python. I want to print in Python. How can I skip the first two indexes of Python? Why not for a index two? Yep. See, this all, this all is about knowing Python change loop uh, step index in flight. Uh, that's not at all going to be a good thing. No, oh, except that totally hit it. I'm trying to do something as simple as changing the variable which I'm iterating over i, but I'm getting different in C and Python. Print i if i equals two, i equals four. You're not doing anything you are. For example, for i in range, we'll consistently set i to the next, no matter what. If you want to do the equivalent, yeah, you do while. See this? This is the this is how to do it. And see, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be awful if you ran it the other way. Like I, I think it would still work, but like it's not like I don't want to. I only want to hit the things once, basically. Um, identify non primes. Match number. I think this is actually going to work okay in a minute. Um, match number. Populate prime array, match number, prime array. So here is what we're going to do. Um, current index. Um, match index equals zero. While Match index is less than 21. I think we're just going to use that number for now. Wait a minute. I had this in my head. Now I lost it. So. Oh, wait, maybe. Uh... Match number equals zero. Hang on a second. This might work. So I wish there was a way that you didn't have to declare this outside. And I'm sure there is, but I can't think of it right now. So we're not going to mess with it. Um, so while match number is less than 21 match number and we actually don't have to add zero here So if we're getting it as true, then we would actually add it here because we want to increment this. We want to increment that.
Oops. All right, let's roll this out. Test failed. Eh. True is not in list. Uh-oh. Index true match number. What? Ooh, I goofed something. Populate primer array, right? I mean, this, all this test was just working a second ago. So, like, we definitely borked something. Um, so what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to back this out. And we're going to put all this down here. And we're just going to make sure the test pass again. Because I want to get back to a safe place. And really, so... I'm okay with this at the moment. Um, but I might actually flip this to another method in a minute. Just so I can test it. But, like, there's not much... There's really not a lot going on here. So, like, it's okay at the moment. Um, but this is one of those, like... I could, I could jump to another method with this particular part and work on it independently. But there's not a whole lot of independence to it. So... Ta -da. Um, so we're populating all the initial numbers. We've got that. So why didn't, while well, match number... Why didn't that work? True is not in list. Value errors. True. Prime index true. Is this... Mm, I don't know why that's not working. It's working right here. It's not working there. And this should be starting at zero. If we make this one, what happens? Still goes boom. True's not on list. Okay, let's figure out what's going on. So I'm going to take these out. Because, like, we made it true right here. Oops, that's going to run forever. Let's not do that. You know, I'm not super happy with a while, like, with this particular while loop, but. Ooh, that passed. That passed. Oh, so it's this line. Identify non prains match number equals match number. Uh, no. This, this should have picked up two to start with. That's the bug. Where's the bug button? I forget. <laughs> Match numbers two. Yeah, it should have worked. Match numbers one coming into it. Primes index true. And then it gets moved to two in this next step. number and so true is not in list Initial number is 20. Oh, 
okay, that's that's okay. That that did all that up there. Match number is still six. So this should be calling. Oh, I understand what's happening. It's going through. This is going to keep working until it runs out, until we've hit all the primes. And then once we've hit all the primes, there won't be any trues left in the list. When we hit the last prime, the rest of the numbers will not be prime, so there won't be any true values inside the list itself. And that's when it goes boom, because we're setting this index explicitly based off that. I didn't think about that. Okay. It's the start. It's the starts and the ends. That's what gets you. It's going to blow up here in a second. Uh, Maybe not. Variables are not. I don't know why that didn't explode. Oh, because I'm not actually calling the thing. Ha. See, yeah, so I got the 19 and then it exploded because there's no true in the list. Okay, how? Hmm. I want to see if I can make this work. Return zero based index of the list item it raises a value error if no such. Okay. See, I can catch the error. Well, you could also... I just don't like throwing errors, and, like, it's fine, you can do that, or whatever. But, like, what you could do is return the number of times X appears on the list. You could do that. Actually, I wonder if that would work. And right now, this is just playing around. Like, I'm just, this is poking at the things to see what's going to happen. Um, wait, so if we did actually, is 19 a prime? I can't remember. Yeah, so 19's a prime. So it runs if the last number in your while loop check is actually a prime. But as soon as you go to 20, I'll bet it explodes. As soon as you go to 21, I'll bet it explodes. Okay. Oh, it finished with as code one. Yeah, okay, true is not in the list. It did, it did explode. We just, I just missed it. Um, is 19 a prime? Exit code zero. So zero means it passed. Okay, cool. And then now 20 is gonna show us a one again, right? No, zero. 20 is not a prime. Oh, when it's less than 20, which would give you 19. But the 19 would give you 18. I don't know. Um, so I don't know, and this is a question, actually, that we're going to test right now, where I don't know if you do a while loop I don't know if this is going to work or not. So we're checking the count of primes. I'm assuming it checks every time. True is not in the list. Guess not. Huh. I would have thought that would have worked. 
Prime's count looking for true, Prime's index of true match number. Oh, it starts at the match number, and the match number is plus equals one. Which means there might not, it would be the last, there would be a true there, and then we've added one after it, which means we're jumping over the last thing. Prime's index, true, match number. I really want this true thing to work. Or I really want this index thing to work somehow. Oh, wait, no, so there's always gonna be trues in there because we're we already have the prime numbers. Never mind. That's not gonna work at all. How like I can catch the error, but I don't want to catch the error. I don't want to throw an error. Um. Hmm. I should just throw an error and catch it. Excuse me. Yeah, come on. Um, like there's all these different ways you could do this, but or there's at least a few. But I want one that looks good. And it's fun because this is like these are fun little toys to play with. So if we flip the trues that are the falses, that's not really going to help us either. Initial number in range, two to 21 primes, append true. So we're making everything true. We're counting them, we're cutting them out. Uh, I think the way to do it is just to catch the exception. I don't like the idea of exceptions, but like, it's just, it's a thing. It's fine. Um, Well, it's less than 21. Let's run this again. Yeah, there's one. And then 20 worked? I can't remember. Did 20 work? Oh, 290. There you go. Yeah, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19. See, it's cool. It's working. Like, that's it doing its thing. Here's the one that I don't understand. Is if we go to 19, why does this still pass? And why did that loop? Oh, because we did this. Oh, wow. Processing 19. I don't understand how that got there. Is that a plus one up here? No. This is less than 19. And that is 19. Oh, it's less than 19. No, I still don't understand. I'm missing something. I've been at this too long. So it's 18 coming into here, and we add one, and it's 19. That should stop it. That shouldn't make that call. 18 should be the last one that gets run. And 
Am I wrong about that? I mean, clearly I'm wrong about that, but like... I don't know how that is the case right now. I can't, my brain is not latching onto that one. So 18, primes index true, match number, oh, cause it's, okay. It's looking at 18, but the first, the next one in the index is true is 19. Okay. Okay. I'm with you now. Yeah. And so we look at 14, the next one available is 17 because we already nuked everything else. Okay. Now it makes sense. I was confused for a minute. Wait, so, so we should be able to make this crash. So it was looking at 18 and it hit 19. That makes sense. So if we do this as 18, now that should crash it. I don't understand why this is working. Why aren't we seeing the error? Do you have to land on? No. I want to understand why it's crashing on this particular one. True is not in list. Oh. That's why, because range only goes one less. It goes, sorry, if you put a range of 22, it goes to 21. This looking for 21, like I was, I was calling an index too high. That was what it was. Uh, if I go here now to 22, this will probably give me the same error, right? No. Well, now I'm confused again. There's the error because it has to jump to another. It has to jump to another prime. Okay. I think I understand that. It's for another time. How do we get it to... It's really interesting that I hit that num that I hit that. I happen to use that as the test case. Wait a minute. Does that mean that I'm not having to worry about this? No. This goes to 24. It passes. Somehow this is going to call. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe this is okay. And I just, I was just doing, I was just calling a too far of an index. Because if it. No, there has to be a point where you call one that's true. This is inconsistent. And that's weird to me. Um, I don't understand it yet which is why it's weird to me. So if we've got, if we've got the numbers and we've got true here and false here, and we run through this, we set stuff to false and then we try and grab the last one, there's not going to be a true index to hit, which is when you should get that value error. It's 
21 and 21, right? Is what did it for us. I want to get back to a broken thing and then look at the broken thing. True is, value error, true is not in list. Okay. Because it called... It it fired for 18. Okay, so these, these are the matches, right? So 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19... Okay, that's it. There is no there is no prime after 19 that it's hitting. But I still don't understand why this makes it pass. Oh, less than That's also Okay, I understand now. That's going to fail. No. Processing 21. Is 21 a prime? List of prime numbers. I thought like seven times three. Yeah. Am I not something? Okay, something's wrong with my algorithm. Oh, because I'm hard coded here to 21. Oh, is that going to fail? Okay. Okay, I think I understand. That's that is what's going on. We're getting when we hit the last one, there is no true. There is no other prime number behind it or farther than it. And then that freaks it out. I don't know how to catch that other than catching the value error. I mean, with this particular approach, like we could do it a different way. I, yes, we could do it a different way. Sorry, I was that was not the pause of the thought there. Um, I'm just trying to think what the how I want to do this. I just don't like the idea of exceptions, but like they're fine. It's a it's a thing you can throw and you can catch them like that's fine. But is there, is there another way through this? And you could do the same thing where you look over, where you just keep looping over the array, which is effectively what this is doing. Like that index thing is going and it's finding the true value or the, the first true and then pulling it out and giving the index and then we'll move it from there. That's not really that different than just looping over the array, finding them and, and moving through um and like even with that you're gonna have to do a check at the end of it to know when you're done um so another way another way you could do this No, nah, so I still like the I still like the the sieve idea and the cutting stuff out, and then flipping it to false. It's that it's that last one. And then, so there's also the idea that we we want to be able to potentially jump this forward again. So like I want to I want to loop this over so that we know how many characters are inside the string. So like you'd want to know where your position was and pull it down that way, or how many characters are in the are in the string at that point. Um, 
And then kind of from there, does that lead us back to Yeah, I just wish it wasn't a, an exception. Like, I want to do it without an exception if there's a way to do it without an exception, right? Again, recognizing exceptions are completely valid things, and you just try and you, you expect an exception, then cool. Um, but it feels like... Pop clear. See, so you can't do count because we're whatever. Well, so, and again, this is getting silly. Reverse the elements of list in place. Eh. Hmm. What you could do Oh, I just had something and then didn't sort. No. Return the number of times X appears on the list. Okay, so this is silly. What 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 you could do is if like if you really didn't want to throw the exception, if that was like awful for some reason. You could get the count of false and then if that number is equal to the number of items left in the list where you would get the length and use the index that you're off of, you would know that there are only false items left, left in the list. And then you could use that as your stopping point. I just want to see if that works. Uh, okay. This is, again, not the right way to do this. Uh, but it's, we'll see if it happens. Um, okay. So identify non-primes. Check for list and range. We need to deal with this a later. Um, we're switching all our primes. To, okay, so when we run this, it, it sets up our thing and it gets it to false. So what we need to deal with here is this while statement. Uh, so if we run it, it's gonna crash because or crash whatever it's gonna exit with error code one or exit code one whatever true is not in the list so if we change this while statement okay i'm a little brain fried so we'll see it this may not go well whoops that's not the space bar this is the space bar which is really just a single key while primes count false is not equal to length of primes Minus, uh oh, so we still have we still have to have the match number. This is I'm almost certainly going to create an infinite loop here. True is not in the list. Okay, that didn't work, but it didn't infinite loop. So step one. Cool. 
So the length of the primes. Minus the length of the index. Minus one, is it because it's zero based? Whoops. This is ridiculous. Well, we got something to work. Oh, what is going on there? Also, I've broken my hotkeys that let me jump lines and words, which kind of is a bummer. True, index true match number. Why didn't this work? So that goes to 19 again. So. Match number 21, initial number 21. Okay, cool. Is it gonna show me? No, it's not. Uh, it's not helpful. Oh, I broke everything. Link the primes. Whoops. Normally you would put this all on a better thing, but this is where I am right now. So link the primes is 22. Primes index is two. 22 is 3, 7, 11, 13, 14, 17, pressing 17. Wait a minute, is my order messed up here? So match number is one, and then the first one we find is two. Process is two. Match number is three, because we go up by one after the match number. And it finds three, so that's cool. Process three, four. First one we get is five, right? And we process five. You go up six, you hit seven, seven gets processed. Goes up to eight, it goes to 11, 11 gets to 12, which hits 13, 13 goes up to 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay, cool, got it. Oh, length of primes. Oh, 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 oh. Wait. Print. Oh, you're a true zone on list. Why did that happen already? Oh, just threw the air in a weird place. So two or false. Processing two. Eleven. How do we get to that count already. Oh, 
Oh, okay, okay. 11 or false. That was just where the line was demarcating. Demarcating? Demarking. So 11 or false at that point, and there's 22 and 3. And then so then what we want to see is this number. A lot of raw numbers happening here. So prime count of false is 14. Oh, that's the total number. Ah, it's not going to work because it's not the number left. You got to like, you got to do it off that. Well, unless count can have, can start in an index. Nope, doesn't. Okay. Um, I can't think about how to do it without, without throwing the, the error or the yeah, exception, whatever. Um, or with this approach, like you could do it. Again, you could do it like with that while loop and just keep iterating. And if you hit false, just go to the next one. Oh. I wanted to use this though. Like, I really like that, getting that index and like punching it through. Well, so like one of the silly ways you could do it would be to throw it in a map or like a hash of key values and do do it that way. Or just have like a true one and you throw all the true ones in there and they're false. But that's weird too. Because you would need to... Nah, you still need to pull it out. How? It's that last one. Um, well, you could just... Mm, you could set it up to go well again you'd have to look for the exception i was gonna say you could keep adding numbers to it until you hit like the next prime but that would and then like end on a prime that's one greater that's one prime greater than whatever your top number is um, but you'd still have to look for the exception to basically bounce through that Eh, I go whatever with the exception in that's fine it was fun to play with but now we got to figure out how to do try accept again um the uh, which is funny this is one of the first ones that I got the uh what's my thing uh foobar thing coming up on uh it's just try accept right a lot of stuff not showing me what's going on. Try accept block. There we go. Okay, that was fun. Still think there might be something there. I just can't come up with it at the moment. Match number one, prime print. Okay, this explodes trees not in the list ah. what was it if we went to 20 it worked right I'm really glad that we hit this
Yeah, see, so that, that passed. Exit code zero. Uh, but we want it to fail specifically. So make this all 21. Yes, I'm going to move this to a variable. Just not there yet. True is not in list. Yep. So try all that. Except, and I forget how you do, what's the, how do you do the specific, you just do value error. Yeah, there you go. Just gonna pass it. And now if we run our test, see, see how easy that was? Like, I know it, but like, I just don't like the idea of the exception. Um, why is that test pass zero of one test? What's going on? Oh, is it? Ah, uh, I'm infinite all of a sudden, I think. I'm caught in a loop. Why isn't it caught in a loop on this one? Oh, it was. Oh, because it doesn't move this up if you fail it. Oh, that's a bummer. It looked like it was going to be easy. Not as easy. I think I'm going to punt on this and just try going up the other the other way. Um. Yeah, okay, so this, like, that's going to get a little bit more complicated, so we're just going to do it the other way. Uh... And could you actually do, for number in range, a pinned true? I don't think you could do it at the same time. No, you couldn't. So for match number in range of two, but see, this isn't using the sieve because like it's skipping Like, it could just loop over every one, but then you wouldn't be using the sieve. You would just literally be looking over every one. And, like, that doesn't, that's not this algorithm, right? So, we do want to get to the trues and find the next true. So, that's right. I take it back. This is still the right way to do it. But could you, so how? Well, oh, what you do is just like, how do you exit a while loop? Um, Python exit while 
loop. Break, continue. Break. Break, continue. Pass. I think it's break. Exit while loop in Python. Oh, I remember this. This is one like doing multiple ones isn't too cool. Break because like trying to do a nested while loop and break out of the top one or the bot like doesn't isn't fun. Um, but if we break here instead of pass. See what that does. So one, does it run forever? Stop and rerun. Oh, it's still running. Ah, oops. Okay, Xcode zero. There we go. Test passed. Ta-da. Okay, so that might be how we make the numbers. Um, that was a fun little experiment. Break. For initial number and range two to twenty one. See this this is the other interesting thing, which is gonna be how how to get the right length of the list. Because what you would do potentially is populate primary. So how do you concat a, oh, whoops, I'm doing this with a, mm. I can cat uh, an array. Can cat to string. Can cast, I spelled, can cat. How about that? I like that other people have misspelled it too. And that my misspelling picked it up. Oh, join, right. Uh, yeah. Possibly been at this stream stuff a little longer this evening than I was ready for. Because what you could do... I was trying to figure out what the... what a good way to do this would be. So... None, right? Is Python. So if you do Python Find me scratch bed. Nope. Find me scratch bed. Project view? Is everything freaked out? What's going on? There we go. Uh, concat array. Concat list. Actually, really, what I wanted to see is 
one, nine, nine, four. Just so we have it lined up with the indexes. I don't know if that's the right syntax. We'll find out. Join is not defined. My list join? What is it? Oh, right, 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 right. This is the weird one for me. Expected string instance, none type found. So what I was thinking you could do is, well, I guess if it was strings, you could do this. I don't know if that's going to work because it has a number in there. I'm going to see what happens. I think it's going to break. Yep. But what you could do is when I, I guess we should actually do the two, three, five, whatever. See, so what you could do is actually concat it this way, and that's how you could actually generate your string. And then from there, you could get the list, the length of the thing and keep adding numbers to the array the list, whatever, until you have the right length. And so it's a little bit, it's a different approach than this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna comment this one out. I guess we're just gonna comment this one out too. And then I'm gonna comment this out for a minute. We're going to use that. And I'm not going to test on this for a minute because I just want to see if I can get this going. So for initial number and range 2 to 21, this time we're going to append initial number. And then what we want to do is for the match number one, one to 21, try match number, identify the thing, match number print, blah, 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 blah. And then up here, what we're going to do is switch this to, instead of false, we're just going to make it nada and run that. That did not work as expected. What I was expecting is two, three, and then four to be gone. Why didn't four be gone? Because it worked over on other thing. At least our test case seemed to make us think that it worked. Primes, check nom. It didn't call this because it's not pro it didn't we didn't see that processing thing. Populate prime array. Oh, print primes. 
Nothing's happening here after that. Like, why isn't this stuff firing? It's very strange. We got it. Match number. Match primes print. Like, this should be... Oh, because prime index is true. Oh, we got to do this. We got to redo this whole thing. Oh, that's a bummer. I, I really like this idea of doing the concatenation and, and pushing it down that way. But this is, but this is looking for a true value to get the first one. And see the index, we can't. Oh. There's a way to say index not. Python list index not. Yeah, so I want I want I want the thing that doesn't exist. Hey look, there's nothing dirty about using Pyx up close. Yeah. Oh Well, so because I want to, I just want to mush stuff down in the join. Um, so you could make a you could make a array of tuples or an array of arrays or a list of lists and do it that way. Um, uh, list index test, whatever. Oh, cancel. List index test pi. So Yes, I know that's not alphabetical. So print items index I don't know how you would get to that. So 
Zero is not in the list. Yeah, so there's got to be... True is not in the list. How... Again, I'm just toying with this in a way that's just like to see what we can do with it. Because um, it would be interesting if you could get to, if you could call an index and get to true and have it populate for you basically uh, down to getting the A so that you could do the concatenation off the second things uh, or the joins off the second things. Um, Okay, um, I'm gonna play with that more tomorrow. Uh, I like. I just wanna I wanna find a fun way to do it. The. Because, this is, just a fun way to do things. Um, I I really I would love the idea of having the concatenation, happening. Slamming off instead of like going through the indexes because you could loop through the indexes and then say is it true is it false or whatever but then that's still messing with it um though i guess you could just apply so one another way to do it would be to apply when you see an index that is true like when you're going through it append that to a list and then zap all the rest of the numbers find the next one that's probably a good way to do it um But that's for another day. We'll do that tomorrow. Uh, cool. All right. Well, it's fun being back. Uh, we'll do this again soon. And uh, in the meantime, have a good one. And we'll uh, we'll see you all around. And we'll see if we can uh, stop uh, stop a little OBS here. Have a good one. Be kind to stay healthy. Probably a good thing to stay. Cheers. <laughs>